Hey everyone, Daniel here for Rock the JVM, and in this video, we're going to discuss pattern matching in Scala, namely how to customize that with our own patterns. So this video is for those of you who have some Scala foundations, and as always, I'll recommend that you code with me in this video, and whenever you need to refresh your memory about these concepts and about these techniques, just refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description. All right, so let's get back to our little IntelliJ idea or your favorite development environment. I've created a small object here that I called custom pattern matching. I'm going to also define a main method in case we need to test something. And here in this video, I'm going to discuss about pattern matching, which is one of Scala's most powerful features, as you probably know already. And for pattern matching, I have another video here on the Rock the JVM channel about how to best use pattern matching with some tricks and with some patterns that are less used but extremely powerful. And I'm pretty sure you're aware of what pattern matching does. It's able to deconstruct values, data structures, into their constituent parts and then allow you to use those constituent parts into more complex expressions. And pattern matching supports a bunch of examples. For example, it supports constants, it supports strings, it supports singleton objects, it supports case classes, which are extremely powerful and very widely used in practice because case classes are these lightweight data structures that are specifically meant to be decomposed. And then we have tuples and we have collections among others. Now, what happens if your data type that you want to subject to pattern matching is not in this group? For example, if somebody defines a class outside of your code base, for example, in an old Scala library or even in a Java library, I have here a small example here where I defined a class in Java. So this is a Java class called pet. It has two public fields. One is called name and one is called age and a constructor. Now, if we were writing Scala, this would be a case class with two fields and we would be done with it. But assume that we cannot really touch this code because this belongs to an old library. And yet, you want to be able to use pattern matching on this data structure. So, for the use case where you want to pattern match against an existing class, or maybe even from a Java library, the way that we would do that would be to say an object, I'm going to call this pet. And I'm going to define a very special method that is called unapply. Unapply is a method that has a special meaning for the Scala compiler, much like apply has the special meaning of invoking instances like they were functions, and apply is usually used to construct instances of classes. Now, unapply is used to deconstruct instances of classes into their constituent parts. Now, if you're familiar with unapply, I'm pretty sure you're anticipating what I'm about to write. But if you're not familiar with unapply, watch very closely what I'm about to do. So under unapply, I'm going to take as an argument a pet as pet. Now, I've made sure that this Java class belongs to the same package as my uh, Scala application here. So uh, otherwise, you would need to import pet from whatever package you might want to store it. And I'm going to make this method return an option of, and I'm going to use a tuple of string and int, namely the name of the pet and the age of the pet. And as an example, I'm going to say if pet.age is less than one, I'm going to return none. Otherwise, I'm going to return sum with a tuple. I'm going to say pet.name and pet.age. Now, why did I write something like this? You'll see in a second, and just ignore the implementation for now. I'm going to also explain how that fits in shortly. Now, the unapply method, or the presence of unapply, would allow us to write a pattern that is named pet and can take a pet as an argument. That is, we can deconstruct a pet and obtain a string and an int out of it. So, for example, if I define a val, let's call this Garfield, one of the famous cats, I'm going to create a new pet with a name Garfield, and the age, let's say, 102. All right, now I'm going to subject Garfield to pattern matching. I'm going to say Garfield pattern match as Garfield match. And I can say case with pet with two arguments, a name and an age. And on the right hand side, I can say I'm Garfield. I'm actually name. I'm age years old, 
if Garfield could talk. But notice that this pattern match works on our pet data structure because we wrote this unapplied method with this exact structure. Now, I'm going to take some time to make the connections between the elements of the pattern matching structure and the signature of unapply. First of all, let me comment this object and let me recompile this code or rather let IntelliJ try to recompile my code and notice that the pet pattern here is not available. So the fact that we added an object pet with an unapply method that takes a pet as an argument enabled this pattern matching structure. So notice that we can subject our own data types through pattern matching. Cool, let's make the connections. So the name of the pattern, which is pet, is the same as the object where unapply is stored. So that's one. Now let's state the argument. The argument is the element or the instance being matched. Now the result of unapply is an option containing a tuple. Now this tuple contains the values that we will then obtain in the case. So the values in the tuple are the same as the elements being deconstructed. So these are the elements of unapply. So the unapply method will take as argument the element being matched. The name of the pattern is the same as the name of the object where we have the unapply method. And the values that are being obtained are the values inside the tuple wrapped inside the option. Now why do we have option here? Because the pattern might or might not be matched. For example, if we have a pet with Garfield and the age zero, for example, assuming that this pet was just born, if we subject Garfield to pattern match, this pattern will not be matched because pet.age is less than one. And so none signifies the fact that a pattern is not matched. So this is how we can make the connections between the signature of unapply and the structure of pattern matching. Now, the important thing to note is that so far we have a pet instance matched against a pet structure with name and age identical to the fields of the original class. Now, these may not necessarily have any connections to each other. And to that end, I'm going to show you another unapply example. Now, for this example, I'm going to show you an unapply taken a number as an int, I'm actually going to name this age because this means the age of a pet. And I'm going to return an option string. So notice that the pattern is called pet. The argument being matched is an int, it has nothing to do with a pet. And the option returned a string, not a tuple containing the exact fields of a class. So the name of the pattern, the value being matched, and the returned type may not necessarily have any connections to each other. So I'm going to say if age is less than one, I'm going to return a sum containing the string cub, so a young pet. Otherwise, I'm going to say sum with, let's call this adult pet. Now, depending on your favorite pet, the condition here might vary, but you get the idea. Now, with this unapply method and with the notions that we've learned so far, we can now subject an integer through pattern matching. So because the age, the argument, is the argument of unapply, we can subject a number through pattern matching. So I can say, well, let's call this Garfield status as Garfield age, so Garfield.age, which is a number, and then I'm going to subject that to pattern matching, and then I'm going to say case pet, which is the name of the pattern, which is the same as the object where unapply is stored, and inside the pet pattern, we need to return a string because this is what the unapply method has as a return type. So I'm going to say pet with status. And then I'm going to return an S interpolated string. For example, Garfield is a, and I'm going to inject status inside. So Garfield is a cub or Garfield is an adult pet. All right. So this is how we can put any kind of value through pattern matching because we now have an int subjected to a pattern that's called pet and the returned value is a status which is a string given by this option string. All right. So this is how you can define your own patterns on your own types with your own structure. And this is quite unparalleled in uh, languages that offer pattern matching. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is how to deconstruct sequences 
in your custom way. Now, you probably know that if you define a list, which is list, let's say, one, two, three, you can match that. So you can say val, let's call this list description, as a list match. And I'm going to have the case list with one, two, and whatever. And we can return a list with one, two, and something else. So you probably know from the other video that I showed with pattern matching tricks, which you can, by the way, you can check it out and I'm gonna attach a link in the description. You can create patterns with lists and you can have as many arguments as you like, including variable arguments. So you can say one, two, and then underscore star, which means var args. So list starting with one and two. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own patterns, including with var args on your own data structures. So for example, I'm going to define an abstract class that I use all the time in my courses and in my live training sessions. I'm gonna define a my list that I'm gonna make generic, and this will have a head method that will return an A, and I'm gonna throw new no such element exception as the default implementation, the tail method returns a my list A, and this is again a throw, so I'm gonna return that. And I'm going to create a case object, I'm gonna call this empty, which extends my list nothing. And you probably know from the variance concept what this thing is. And then I'm gonna create a case class that I'm gonna call cons, which is a historical name for constructor in old functional programming. So I'm going to keep that and I'm going to override the head, which is an A and the override tail, which is a my list A. And now we have extends my list A. So this is a quick linked list implementation. Now, in order to make this my list eligible for pattern matching on sequences in the exact same way as we did with the Scala standard library list, we would write a method that's called unapply seq, so unapply sequences. So I'm going to define an object that I'm going to call my list. This is the name of the pattern, and the variable argument pattern is going to be denoted by a method that's called unapply seq. So unapply seq will take a single argument and I'm going to make it generic, say list as a my list a, and this is going to return another option. The option signifies that the pattern may or may not be matched. And the value stored within that option is not a plain value, but rather a sequence. That's why it's called unapply seek. So this was going to be an option of seq of a. And for example, I'm going to say if list is empty, so list is equal to empty, then I'm going to return sum with seq dot empty. So this is going to be my list with parenthesis parenthesis, that is, uh, with no arguments or no values inside. Otherwise, I'm going to call this recursively, I'm going to call unapply seq with list tail. And uh, this will return an option of a sequence. So I'm going to say map, I'm going to call this rest of sequence. I'm going to say list.head with, I'm actually going to concatenate that with plus column with rest of sequence. So the implementation is not really that important. We're basically deconstructing a my list into a sequence wrapped inside an option. All right. So this implementation will make sure of that. Now, for us, for pattern matching on sequences, the signature is what's important. So the name is called unapply seq, exactly as it is. One argument, because pattern matching, of course, takes only one argument or one element being matched. And the return type is an option containing a sequence of elements. Now, if we write something like this, I can define a list. Let's call this, I'm going to call this a my list of int, for example, and then I'm going to use a cons with cons one, cons two, cons three, and empty. So this is the same as list one, two, three. Now, I can say, let's call this my list PM for pattern match, I can say my list match. And then I can add a case for a pattern that's called my list, 
with a variable number of arguments, for example, one and underscore star. And I can say my own list starting with one. And notice that the compiler is happy with my pattern match structure because of the same concept. We have the name of the pattern that's called my list. It belongs to an object that's called my list. And it's common practice that this object be named in the exact same fashion as the class that you want to pattern match. Then you have the element being matched, which is a list. And so the list needs to have the appropriate type, the same type as the element being matched. And the values here might be a variable number of arguments because we have an option of a sequence as the return type of unapply SEQ. So this is how you can pattern match your own structure. And I can very well print this out. So I'm going to say my list PM. And we're going to see my own list starting with one being printed to the console. No problem. All right, so we have my own list starting with one. Now, if we go back to some concepts that we already know from Scala, for example, the fact that case classes are automatically eligible for pattern matching, now we know why. Because the compiler automatically creates a companion object with the appropriate unapply methods for all case classes that we define. And the Scala standard library, including the collection library, is extremely rich in unapply methods being added to the companion objects of many collection types, including list, which is by far the most common. Now, one other minor thing, and uh, this is not even worth another example. Why do we need to return options here for unapply and unapply seek? Now, the answer is that we don't necessarily need to return an option, but all we need to do is return a data structure with two methods. One that is called is empty, which tests if the pattern matching is passed or not and a method called get, which returns the value wrapped inside that data structure. And there is basically no reason to use any other data structure but an option. You could if you want to, but in my experience, I've never used an apply with anything else other than an option. Well, all right, so in this video, you learned that one of Scala's most powerful features is actually even more powerful. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material. Check out the written version at the blog and check out my website at rockthejvm.com. I have tons of material about Scala functional programming, Cats, Zio, Aka, Apache Spark, and many, many other goodies. Until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.